quick and short um, sort of theory-based introduction, sort of the world we live in, what's the problem statement, um, why do we need purpose in our world today, um, and then go into purpose and how you can sort of find your purpose. Then we'll talk about the example Lebenshilfe Tirol, which we think shows very well sort of how we dive through this entire crisis and how our partners and partnerships are very deep and steady thanks to our purpose. Then we'll have a short interactive part because it's really important for us to hear about your experience, about your questions, about your remarks, sort of what you're thinking about this, what your learnings are, so we can all learn from each other. And of course, we can always have questions um, in the very end, and then we'll have a short checkout. So for the first beginning, I would like to actually know who, who's here. So I would ask you all to go on Slido, www.slido.com, and join me in a quick poll. You're required to enter a number there. Please enter 37971. And the first question you'll be asked there is um, the area of occupation. So what is your area of occupation? Where do you work and what kind of organization do you work? To partake in the poll, you can go on www.slido.com and enter the number 37971. Okay, so nonprofit organization and university, profit organizations, one person. So, a majority of nonprofit organization uh, people and a couple of people from university and profit organizations. Great. So, thanks for joining in this poll. So, we have a quick picture of who we actually. Uh, in this round, who the other people are. And then we have another question, which is purpose is something you've thought about a lot personally. You've thought about a lot in your organization or in your area, or you haven't thought about at all yet. Okay, so most of you have thought about it um, a lot personally and some also within your organization. Let's wait for a couple of more people to answer and see if it works. You can still answer on the same slide, on the same tab. All right, so the very, very majority of you have thought about it personally, and um, some of you have already thought about it in your organization as well. And then I have uh, one more question for the beginning. What is the first word that comes to mind when you think of purpose? Why? Mm-hmm. Guidance, very important one as well. Meaning, aim, development, the DNA of an organization, life. Motivation, reason. I'm just going to wait for a couple of more of you to answer. Aim. Motivation and aim. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. So thanks for taking part in this first sort of Poll. I'm going to quickly check how many we are by now. Okay, so we're 13. Um, actually, this isn't that many people. 
So um, maybe let's just have a very, very quick round. Say your name and say the organization that you work for. So we sort of have a picture of the others in the round. And let's start, please, with um, Amy. And turn on your microphone while you're speaking, please. Okay, Amy, we can't hear you, so I'm going to jump back to you later. Anna Röttger, can you please tell us a little about yourself? Hi, um, I'm an intern at Lebenshilfe Tirol in Tabea's team right now. And I'm in a project for um, sports for clients with um, disability, yeah, which are disabled. Thanks, Anna. All right, next person on my list is Bela. Please, can you tell us about yourself? We can't hear you, Bela. For some reason, your microphone is not working. No, not yet. But let me, I'll jump back to you. Maybe you can check under your functions to, to, to put on the right microphone. And I'll ask Bernhard Ebner, please, can you tell us about yourself? Hi, do you hear me? Yes. Ah, hi. Hi, my name is Bernhard. Um, I work at the Z6. It's a, a social um, organization, also like the Lemsi Federal, but a little smaller and there are, um, we are working with young people with young, um, and we want to, to help them to go their way. And for me, it's interesting to be here, to sit here, to, I'm very interesting to watch. And um, I want to learn and to improve. And, and I am very, yes, um, <laughs> I'm very um, aufgeregt, um, excited, excited. excited. Cool. Thanks, Bernard. Thanks. Next person is Christian Leis. So my name is Christian. I'm a consultant. I do a lot for the Lebenshilfe, I think, also, and for other social and uh, profit organizations. Uh, I call my uh, organization Integra. And uh, the topic is very interesting, I think, and I have a lot to do with this topic. So. <laughs> I'm really glad to be here. Thank you, Christian. Thank you. Florian, you're the next person on my list. Hi. Um, I start the camera as well. I'm Florian uh, from Unbound Coffee Roasters. Um, I founded the company three years ago, and uh, we started to work since one, one and a half year uh, with uh, Lebshilfe, with some clients. They're coming uh, once a week to uh, help us coffee roasting in all uh, process steps. So uh, yeah, it's a really nice cooperation and uh, yeah, looking forward and hope they uh, can come very, very soon to uh, start working again. <laughs> Thanks, Lo. <laughs> Thank you. Then Hannah, you're the next person on my list. Hi, uh, I'm Hannah. I'm currently a student at the MCI in Innsbruck and I will start my internship um, in March at the Lebenshilfe, and I'm very excited about that. Thank you, Anna. Cool that you're here. Isabella, you're the next person, please. Hi, my name is Isabella. I am also working at the Lebenshilfe Tirol, but part-time, and I am studying at the MCI in Innsbruck, and I'm studying social work. Thank you, Izzy. Leah, you're the next person on my list. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Hi, I'm Leah. I work for the Lebensjahr for Tirol part-time, just as Isabella does, and I'm also a student at MCI and I study nonprofit social and health management. I'm really, really interested to hear more about our purpose-based identity. <laughs> Thank you, Leah. Then we've got uh, Barbara, you're the next person on my list. Um, Hi. We can't... Yes, now we can hear you. Yeah. Hi, my name is Barbara. I'm from the Lebenshilfe Oberösterreich. Uh, I'm not a student anymore, a <laughs> long time ago. Uh, yeah, and I'm just listening for our company. Cool. 
Welcome, Barbara. Um, Philip, you just joined us. We're having a very quick introduction round where everybody just says their name and where they, what organization, organization they work for. So hi, Philip. Can you please tell us a bit about yourself? Hi, my name is Philip, and I'm um, the CEO of the Aufbauwerk. We are working with uh, handicapped people uh, here in Innsbruck and uh, uh, around Tirol. Welcome, Philip. Thank you. Sascha, you're the next person on the list. Yeah, hello, everybody. My name is Sascha Gell. I'm working at the Center for Social and Health Innovation at the Management Center Innsbruck, currently in several projects regarding people with disabilities and public health. Thank you, Sascha. Klaus, you're the next person. Hi, my name is Klaus Springer. I work for the SLW, which are the social um, help uh, from the Capuchins. And we have uh, institutions for elementary uh, educational uh, and uh, for people, and we have services for people with handicaps and for children and youth. Thank you, Klaus. Welcome. Stefan, you're the next person, please. Hello, my name is Stefan Mader. I'm a division manager in the Diakoniewerk Tirol. It's also a social organization for handicapped people. Thank you, Stefan. All right, let's cycle back to Amy. Maybe, Amy, now you're here and you can turn on your microphone. Okay, Amy's still lost. Um, Vila, should we try again and see whether your uh, microphone works now? So, I hope it works now. Yes. Okay. So, uh, my name is Vela Gerold. I'm the head of the Department of Social Work and Social Policy here at MCI. Thank, Thank you. you Thank you. All right, guys, thanks for the first introduction round. It's just I always like to, you know, know who's with us, sort of, and uh, who we're going to spend the next couple of um, minutes or, well, hour with actually. And um, so I'll jump back to my PowerPoint presentation. Um, thank you for that quick warm up. And um, then let's just quickly go into the world that we live in currently. So I think I don't have to tell you this, but I think that the current state and the last year has shown us more than ever that we really live in a VUCA world. So nothing has ever been as volatile as the world and as uncertain, as complex and as ambiguous as it is at the moment. And I think that all of you notice this, uh, of course, in your organizations as well, that it's uh, very difficult to cope with this and that you have to sort of find a way to stay safe and have guidance, have aim and um, keep your resources up and uh, your energy up as well. Um, another thing that I think is really important concerning our world currently is that we're very performance driven. So it's all about performing, performing, performing. And um, I think that it's, especially on an individual level, very important for people to sort of um, deal with this performance pressure that we have here next to this VUCA world that is um, definitely overbearing. And so this is sort of the, the state we're starting with, the problem state we're starting with. And the, the solution that we in, our, in the Lebenshilfe Tirol found was to have purpose, you know, to really, like the Cambridge Dictionary says, have an intention or aim, a reason for doing something or for allowing something to happen. And um, so, you know, this, this is nice and it sounds nice, but um, how, do, how do you actually find your purpose? as an individual and how do you find your purpose as an organization? It's a difficult topic, right? Mm, so there's just three like, simple ways that I want to just quickly go into um, that we've had success with actually. So um, a big one is the Ikigai. I don't know if you've heard about it. Um, Ikigai stands for purpose actually. And it's a very simple framework that just has you um, ask yourself and your organization four questions that lead you to your own specific purpose. So you ask yourself, what do I love? What do I love doing? And you put everything in there. And then next you ask yourself, what am I really good at? Or what is our organization really good at? And you put everything that comes to mind in that bubble. Then you can ask yourself, what does the world actually need in order to sort of find something that you're not just working past the world? And then you can ask yourself, what can I actually be paid for? Because especially as an organization, as an individual, of course, this is important as well. 
but this is very basic framework that we've um, had a lot of fun with, with also because you can sort of discuss and debate within your organization and sort of really find out what is the purpose that we, we all hold within us, sort of. Another thing that's really important is um, impact goals. So we try to always think of um, what is the impact on a very big social level that we want to reach, not what is the smart goal that we have. These come later, you know, we want to really know next to the output and outcome, what's the impact on a societal level. And then we sort of work ourselves down from this. Um, it's a framework by Finio, which we really um, use often for all our projects and everything. It really helps to sort of know where do we want to go on a societal level and how do we break this down to our actual um, projects. And then, of course, a really, really important part is um, the stakeholder process. So we, um, you'll see it now in a second when I talk about our example. Um, we do everything in a very participatory way because we need the expertise, we need the perspective, we need the knowledge of the employees, of the clients, of, the, um, of everybody else, of the partners, of, of um, relatives of the clients to really know, you know, what, where are we going actually, and to really have everybody come along on the journey we're going and not people stay back and say, we, we can't support this. So with the stakeholder process, of course, you always have sort of a certainty that everybody can go along with you on the journey. Um, you already have, you also have a couple of people that are resistant to change, but um, it'll be easier that way if they know that this was not something that was made up by somebody um, at the top and um, sort of brought down to the bottom, let's say. Yeah, so these are the ways that um, we use actually to determine our purpose and that we use to redefine and, and keep on thinking about our purpose always. So um, let's talk about our evolution of our purpose in the Lebenshilfe Tirol. Um, we were founded as a human rights organization um, in 1963. And um, this is really, a base for all our doing. We keep on saying it, we're a human rights organization and we have to think about this, right? And um, then there was a time in our organization where the main goal was to be the biggest service provider. And um, we realized um, a couple of years back that this, of course, is not really a good way to go. It's not a motivating way to go um, in the current world. And so we had a stakeholder process which was a really big identity process where we really looked into who are we, what do we want to be, how do we want to do things. And um, what came out of this was that we are a spirited companion of people with intellectual disabilities on their way to an accessible, autonomous and fulfilled life. And so this is sort of the center um, sentence that everything um, accumulates around that we do. And back then we also talked about, okay, what are the things that lead us to success sort of? What do we want to always consider in our doing? Um, and this is um, being like farsighted and the accompaniment along the entire lifeline, you know, not only thinking about now, but also thinking about further on. We want to be um, a bundled expert, like we want to bundle expertise in the network and make sure that we have a good network, which um, with our partners is working perfectly. We want to be a safe anchor for for all people that have uh, that work with us, that work for us, that um, that we accompany. We work from human to human always. Um, we want to make sure that everybody has their place in life, and in this place in life, always has moments of joy. We want to be a driving force in social change, and we want to sort of give individual room for life and development. So this is sort of what came out back then. This is something that we now call the heart and soul of our organization. It's been, um, we, we've always had this since 2012. It's sort of always accompanying us. Um, we also worked out um, how we want to accompany people with disabilities. We worked out how we want to work with their relatives. We worked out in this process as well, how we want our um, our team leaders to work and what their sort of um, state is. Yeah. And um, we then decided sort of from a 
um, normal structure from a, a or from an organization you would think top to down right but we thought if we take this really seriously and if we say we're always working from human to human then we have to change our structure and we have to make sure that there is no top and there is no bottom. And if there is, it's definitely not the CEO at the top. Um, and then we decided to sort of have this circle structure. I'm sorry that it's in German. I couldn't um, translate it in time. But in the middle, you have uh, the people with disabilities that are accompanied in, um, in uh, their living arrangements, in uh, work arrangements. And um, they're always in their social room, sort of. And this is the main core of everything we do and everything else we see around. So later, like on the uh, right hand side, you see the CEO or the finances or personal um, at HR and um, and uh, quality management and everything. This is all stuff that we say this all supports the main cause. This all supports the people in the middle, sort of. And this is what we want to always concentrate on and uh, want to make sure that we consider in everything we do. And we don't want to have sort of a top-down structure, but we want to really try to live by this, um, always having the person and the, the people in the, in the core point. Um, we then further decided a couple of years later that we have to sort of, if we take this very seriously, um, we have to think about this on a broader scale. So if we take seriously that we're a human rights organization, then we have to think really broadly. And this actually started out in the um, innovation process that we have. In the innovation process, when it started out a couple of years back, the, it was also a stakeholder process or um, actually employee process. Um, a lot of employees were saying sort of, okay, let's talk about our vision. What, what do we actually want to reach? And um, out came a really wonderful story. And at the core of the story it came out, we're not about you know, accompanying people with disabilities. Actually, we want to accompany anybody that needs support. And um, there we sort of really concentrated on this, on this main thing that we are a human rights organization and that this has further implications for us as an organization. And after this um, innovation process sort of formed this vision, we um, tried to pack it in and try to um, connect it to what we, we already knew we were. And so you see it at the bottom um, here, you see that we have this barrier free, fulfilled, self-determined life that we've always had before. We want to make sure that people have a barrier free, fulfilled and self-determined life. And we want to accompany people on their way to this. But what we sort of added was that we said we have to think about this on a bigger scale. We have to think bigger. We have to think on a on actually cosmopolitan scale. And um, what we took as a help was the sustainable development goals. And we sort of looked at them and decided, OK, which which ones are the ones we can contribute to? Which ones are the ones that are um, obvious for us, sort of? And then we had a question for a couple of uh, employees here and we asked them, what do you think is the is the sustainable development goal or which ones can we contribute to? And actually, people named all of them. <laughs> and so we decided this is actually something really nice, right? And we said, OK, let's sort of connect the sustainable development goals with our identity. And we I, sort of, we connected it with um, environment that we said we have to look at the environment because if we are, um, if we say we're a human rights organization, then we have to make sure that we secure human rights also for people that aren't born yet and for people that will be born. Um, then at the, at, at very important, of course, for us is human rights and liberties of everybody. And this is something that we really wanted to sort of write down. It's not only for people, only for people with disabilities, but it's actually for all people that are touched and, um, and affected by our projects. So we really try to think about this all. And we think it's really important to always think cosmopolitan, but realize, you know, we're a regional organization, but we have to stay uh, open to the world. We have to stay open to what's going on. And out of this sort of evolution, um, we have our new sort of core sentence, which is everybody can lead a self-determined and fulfilling life in a bar barrier-free environment, a cosmopolitan society with a liv livable, intact environment. Lebenshilfe Tirol is a courageous companion and a contributor to an inclusive society. So this is sort of the, this sentence is now accompanying us um, and this is what we want to reach. This is our vision. 
but obviously it's very big, right? It's something um, that we have to work very hard on reaching. And then we asked ourselves, how can we reach this? How, how <laughs> are we supposed to make this possible? And um, we decided with this identity change, actually, we have to also have a cultural change. And um, we have to consider that we have to give our employees sort of the possibilities to um, give their own impact on this and to think of themselves, what, what can we do? What can we contribute? What is the, the main focus that we can take in our team right now? And so um, we decided that we're sort of with this identity change going to go into a total cultural change, which also always has at, at the focus sort of this, why are we doing this? That we want to be the best service provider that we can. And we want to be the best service provider in Tirol. And we want to be the best employer as well. Because we think if we're the best service provider and if we're the best employer, we can actually reach this vision. And um, yeah, and this is sort of our purpose. So we believe that these six factors that you see at the bottom are the ones that, um, that one always has to fulfill, that one always has to think about. And um, we sort of see we've already seen the benefit of all of this so um the impact during the crisis for of our our vision of our purpose of our identity that's holding very strong is mainly that we acted and we did not react so um in the in the crisis when the crisis came up we we were very very fast with um having a multidisciplinary crisis team it was um we were faster than many organizations because we just knew, okay, we know who we are, we know why we do what we do, and we know what we want. And in order to reach this in such a volatile and uncertain world, we sort of really need to work on this. We need to act and not wait for things to throw us around. And um, so what this actually sort of also secured was that all our decisions were always transparent and understandable for all employees and for everybody else around us. Um, which, of course, was a positive effect on the employee commitment, on the team spirit. We really noticed employees saying, you know, yeah, team Lebenshilfe, we're in it. And um, this, this really strong team spirit came up. Um, it's also a reason why we had time for other topics, simply. Um, like, we, we are now... Um, concentrating on ecological sustainability and how can we reach this? How can we change our mobility? So uh, we have time because we are so set in our, our and safe and, and we have reason and aim to do things. Um, and we have the energy to be a driving force in social change because we don't have to concentrate so much on ourselves because this is just simply, it's sort of gone over internally into everything we do. And if we look back on the left hand side, you can look back at our um, sort of at our um, success um, patterns. And I circled the ones that we during this crisis really were able to um, to secure. So one of the most important things was actually that we were a safe anchor. So we we made sure that we we're a safe anchor for clients, but also that we are a safe anchor for employees. So we, we made sure that we keep our services upright, that we don't close down our services so that the people with disabilities still have their place in life and they are not sort of isolated somewhere. And um, we made sure that um, clients always know, you know, this, the Lebenshilfe has got your back, sort of. We also made sure that employees knew this. We, we made a lot of um, things, like we made this uh, package for employees, so they feel this, that we're the safe anchor. We made sure that they have a um, crisis intervention team standing by always if they need help, if they've got psychological troubles, or if the, the situation is currently simply too, uh, too much. Hold on, I'm going to quickly... Uh, let somebody else join. Okay. And um, yeah, where was I? Exactly. And we um, we made sure that they have um, the possibility of coachings and of going to therapy and that we support this. So they just know, you know, we're the safe anchor for you. We will make sure that you feel safe and that you feel um, safe within a very, very VUCA world. 
Um, what was always um, in the center of everything we do as well, again, was this, we're working from human to human. So we always have to have the person in the, in the core point and we always have to think about them. Um, then we were a driving force in social change because we made sure that we sort of um, kept on reminding the government that people with disabilities are supposed to be in crisis teams and that you're um, not supposed to forget them and all of your um, um, like regulations and rules. Um, those who working in the field know exactly how often we were forgotten and we kept reminding them. We kept reminding them that they have to have um, people participate in the crisis team and that it has to be a diverse crisis team. And we always made sure that the media and the government knows this. Um, and then we bundled exper expertise in the network. We um, internally had the bundled expertise. We absolutely trusted our experts in the, uh, in the different um, subjects. And um, that's why we were fast and we were, um, we were fast in our decisions. And that's why we always knew sort of, okay, we can trust this. You know, we trusted the experts. We trusted the experts and we trusted our identity and we trusted um, our purpose. And externally, we also made sure that we're sort of, um, we always shared our uh, documents for other uh, social providers. We, we made sure that we're sort of sharing experience and learning from each other and having exchange there. And um, the main example is sort of that we were very early with places for quarantines for clients. We had places for quarantines in case they need to go into quarantine. Um, and we wanted to make sure that um, our, our um, health system isn't um, sort of overthrown by this. And then we, made and we wanted to make sure especially that clients feel safe. And so we decided we'll have our own quarantine places. And we set them up and we shared this experience and we shared all our infos with the other um, social providers here. And also we shared our, um, in scientific studies, we're, we're now a best practice example actually in um, two scientific uh, studies where they're um, looking at, uh, at the nonprofit organizations and how they went through this Corona crisis. Yeah. Um, one point I want to point out again is the multidisciplinary crisis team. So um, it's from different uh, perspectives, this team and our CEO meets up with our, um, with, with our client representation um, uh, several times and online, <laughs> everything online, of course. And the clients are also sort of there saying, what, what is our need? What do we wish for? What do you need to consider in your crisis um, management? Yeah. So um, something else that is that that shows this that we acted and we did not react is that um, we also we always said you know our purpose is to keep the person in the middle point in the core point and to make sure that they are safe that they are healthy that they are good and so um, we started testing for our employees back in November um, already weekly. Um, and just now, this is actually lawfully bound. bound uh, like, um, we're lawfully bound to it. Um, but we decided way before already, we want our employees to be safe. We want our clients to be safe. And so we're going to do this. And this is something I think that the only reason why we're able to do these uh, decisions so quickly is because we know so well what we want to do and how we want to get there. Um, It's not only me saying this, so you could think, yeah, you can tell me a long story about how great your organization is, but it's actually also the employees that see it this way. So we had a poll um, back in the first uh, shutdown, sort of, and we, we asked, what do you think? Like, how, how do you think, is it good that the Lebenshilfe Tirol is accompanying people also in such difficult times as now? And um, as you can see in the poll button down here, it's... Um, so it's at 62% that were fully committed to this and said, yes, it's also good. And I don't know if you remember back, but back then, there was a lot of uncertainty. There was a lot of um, people that, you know, they were aware, the employees, that they, are, um, they have a lot of responsibility in this field. They have to be really careful and they have to, um, we have to sort of really keep the human and the people in the core point and see how we're doing this. And there were a lot of people that were scared also back then, of course, but still... Um, so many of our 
Um, so it's 98 that were on a positive scale, actually, percent of our employees said, yes, we think it's good that we're accompanying people also in such difficult times. And um, in a, they were able to sort of write a free, um, free comment during this poll. And um, one employee said, Dear Lebenshilfe Tirol, I feel heard, seen and noticed. The framework conditions of the Lebenshilfe Tirol are appreciative and humane. Emergency situations can be responded to. If something is not going well, we can report it to the appropriate offices. So I think that uh, the employee also talks about this framework conditions and that they are appreci appreciative and humane. And I think that we always think about this also in a crisis where everything is totally crazy, um, really shows that we're always aware of our purpose and where we want to go, how we want to do things. Um, then, of course, there's an impact for partnerships, um, which I really quickly want to go into, seeing as employment is also a big topic of, uh, of the Zero Project Conference. I'm quickly going to share a quick video. One second. You should be able to hear the sound in a second as well. So this is a video of um, one of our partnerships with Empreis. And we have an Empreis store. We call it the Lebens M together with them. So um, the Lebensm, I just quickly wanted to show you the, the video so you can get sort of an idea of what, uh, what we do there. It is a great example, I think, of what Purpose can do for your partnerships because um, the, the partnership with Empires is really a good one. And it, it took a while, but we, we sort of, we were sending a very clear message of what we want as an organization. And we knew very well, okay, which partners are a good fit and which are not. And we were talking to the to, to Empires and to um, the managers and to the project managers and everything and seeing, you know, can we actually get together? Can we have the same purpose? And now there's um, this Lebens M in Mötz and we're we're educating people with disabilities there to work in, a, in an Empires or in a supermarket in general. And Empires is then after they were there um, trained for a year, the the people can then go into a job of, and in one of the other Empires or in the other supermarkets. And so um, this 
this is sort of in the beginning, we knew what are our main things that we want to concentrate on. And this was good because we were much faster in the partnership because we knew what we wanted. We knew what our purpose was and we could find a common sort of base uh, within this. And um, it's really sort of uh, make sure if you have this purpose that you have more deep partnerships and that you have very motivated partnerships. And I think what's the great thing is that purpose is really contagious. So um, in one of the um, meetings that we had in one of the workshops, the HR management um, was actually there and she was so um, motivated by what we were doing there and by the purpose that we were doing there. She was, she, she said in the end of this meeting, she said, you know what, I hope that there's going to be a diverse team and inclusion in every single um, empress that we have sort of. And this is just something great to see, to see this jump over the, and to, the, to be contagious in a, in a positive way, <laughs> actually, um, and see how other people are sort of, um, and our, other organizations are um, dealing with this and how other, other organizations can take on this purpose with you and you can work um, with your common base on reaching this purpose and on reaching your vision and your goal. And um, so, that was um, a, a lot and a quick, quick sort of look around for me and overview for me. So um, I would like to talk about you and see what your thoughts are, what your experiences are and what your questions are. And I would ask you to please contribute this. I'm going to, for this, shut off the presentation. So if anybody wants to say something, feel free to either um, just unmute your microphone um, and say something we're not that many people, it should actually work. Tell us about what your organization has done concerning purpose, how you've, you know, sort of felt this purpose, or if you have questions, of course, anytime you can ask questions. Or also um, the people that are here from university, you know, tell us about what you know from your scientific perspective or, or what you think about this. Everybody's being shy. <laughs> uh, in Upper Austria, we have a lot, uh, we have uh, loads of supermarkets as well like uh, you, you showed us yeah um, we sell regional products and our own cool yeah we have uh, coffee shops as well um, yeah cool what about the others what do you think of purpose in your organization have you already worked with purpose in your organization what what do you think it could to do for your organization also? Yeah, um, we started a project uh, in the first lockdown. Um, by the way, I'm the coffee roaster to remind, uh, remind you. <laughs> and uh, we did a lot. Um, yeah, we talked really a lot about the purpose. Actually, our uh, PowerPoint slides looked very similar to yours. Topia. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think it drives the company in a really uh, yeah efficient way, and uh, yeah, gives you gives you um, gives the the whole company a really good impact, and uh, also uh, shows to uh, new employees what what the company stands for, and uh, yeah, I've. For me, it's really interesting that also Lebenshilfe is working with this concept. Um, yeah, really cool. This maybe maybe this is the reason why we are working so well together. Probably. Uh, <laughs> so there is something uh, very similar values as well. I mean, we sell coffee. Uh, it's actually completely different, but but the values in the core of the companies are maybe very similar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. I think that's a really good point. It's, and that's what I was trying to say with the with the impact for partnerships. You know, it doesn't matter what your actually what your product is or what your service is. If your purpose, um, you can sort of find a common base in your purpose in the partnership, and then you have a really strong partnership, which is a lot of fun also, and which is motivating for all employees that are sort of affected by it. I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true. 
Thank you for that. With it. <laughs> <laughs> what about the others? How do you see it in your organizations? Have you worked with Purpose? Um, can you imagine working with Purpose and um, thinking about this further? Or have you um, already got some experience of your own concerning this that you would like to share with the others? Hi. Um, I know I can't I can't really bring a new perspective into this because obviously I work for the Lebensil for Tirol, but um, from the perspective of an employee, I have to say that I couldn't imagine working for a company now that I have worked for the Lebensil for Tirol, um, which doesn't have such a strong purpose and brings the purpose into every aspect of their work. Um, because especially throughout the last year, I really I felt the whole hashtag Team Lebenshilfe and um, I felt part of a community and even though we were all apart and in home office or weren't able to have our regular meetings and see the people and talk to the people, I still felt connected. So from the perspective of an employee, I, I think it's very important to work for a company that has purpose and identity, a purpose-based identity to yeah, give yourself some purpose in your life and your work. Yeah. Thank you, Leah. What about the others? What do you, what do you, can you share an experience from your organization or from your perspective simply if you're, if you're from university and, um, or other best practice by, uh, examples that you know? I also can't tell much about other organizations, but about how it should work in theory and how I read it in the literature. And recently I wrote something about change in nonprofit organizations. And there I could see the parallels because the literature also suggests that you should have like regions that have autonomous power and, but overall you should all um, have the same values. And I think this was also a part why like the organization could handle the crisis so well. Mm -hmm. Thanks Isabella. Yeah, I think next to this this important factor that you need purpose and you need values and you need a vision, of course, it's also sort of how do I get this down? Uh, how do I how do I put it, uh, you know, into the heads of employees? How how do I make sure that they feel it? Um, these values that we have that um, we we also consider them in our everyday life. Everybody considers them sort of. So I think this is also a really important factor to to see, you know, how can, how do we communicate this and how do we make sure that everybody feels and lives this? And um, I think that the stakeholder process um, to finding purpose and to finding your identity is one of the main things that really gives you such a such a quick start in this because you can just make sure that the employees are actually, you know, they're confirmed with this. They 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 believe this and they. Um, they can go along with it easy, more easily than if you sort of push push change on them in a different way. And then, of course, the reiteration of of all of this and the the marketing internally of purpose and of of your values is the the key to success. Because um, if if you have purpose and you have it standing on your website, it's a great for you know for everybody else that reads it. But if you can't feel it in the organization and everything it does. Um, I think it's really difficult. And this is something that we really try to um, also make sure that every decision that we make also in the crisis management, you know, decisions have to be made very quickly, um, that every decision is transparent and understandable for employees if they look at our purpose and if they think about, you know, what is the identity and, and how are we living this and how are we trying to follow this, um, that they can also say that they can always say, okay, yes, this this is something, this decision is something that I can live with because I realize it. Um, so we have a question mm, from Christian. How are you being the experience of your purpose to employees and what sort of campaigns do you have? All right. So um what we do for every new employee, we have sort of a, we call it Willkommens Tag, so a welcome day. And um Right from the beginning there, we sort of make sure that they know, they know what we stand for, they know what the purpose is, they know um, how we how we do things. 
and um, so thereby we sort of make sure that, that this accompanies them from the way beginning. And then we also have our um, sort of uh, guidelines to action, which which tell employees how are we doing this in everyday life? How are we making sure that we we um, commit to our purpose actually in everyday life? And um, this is always a guideline for them to know what what way should I be working? Sort of. We also have these guidelines for our um, for our leadership. Um, they, for our leaders, they always know as well what they're measured by, sort of, um, not by by us necessarily, but by the employees also. Um, yeah, so this we always make sure, and then we always have these, we try to always have the reiteration of this in, in teams. We have um, workshops, we have workshops with the management, but we have um, different workshops, like the innovation process is sort of stuffed with this because we have to make sure that this is all we we're working for right we if we innovate and if we have new ideas we have to make sure that they're always concerning the purpose and so this is something where it's also always reiterated and um yeah so these are sort of the things that we do i hope that answers your question Christian. If anybody else has a question then of course you can always write in uh, in the chat and if you're if you if you don't want to put on the microphone or if it's not working amy i just see now that your microphone's not working that's why you couldn't talk to us before i'm sorry i, I didn't see it back then all right does anybody else still want to share an experience ask a question Okay, if not, I would like to have a quick sort of um, poll again for the for the end. Let me quickly jump to Slido again. Um, I would ask you please to go on www.slido.com and again type in the number 37971 in case you're already there. Um, or still there, you can uh, sort of answer this hour was, you can type in um, one word or several words and just let me know how you thought this this past fi 55 minutes um, were to you. Informative? So you can join by going on www.slido.com and entering the number 37971. Inspiring, that's always good. Interesting, informative and inspiring. Learning so much, amazing. That makes me happy, thank you. Just going to wait for a couple of more people to take part. Inspiring. Impulse and encouraging. Mm -hmm. It's the breakout room. Okay, and then we have um, one more um, one more round. I would like you to partici participate in and uh, say.